Hey y'all, we are live. How are y'all today? Um, I'm kind of trying to get back on schedule. It is summertime, so I don't have to wake up as early. So probably going to have more evening um, or late afternoon type videos. Maybe I might go into the night videos soon. But I'm just trying to adjust to this new summer schedule. So welcome. I have my, my own hair on today. My own hair today. I did like a little bendy roller set. Try to make it look like extra, you know, 1950s look. <laughs> what do y'all think? Is it cute? Anyway, so we're going to be talking about why building with a man is poverty mind. And I think a lot of women need to hear this only because so many people are pushing this and pushing it. Just because it's being pushed or just because lots of people are agreeing that this is a good way to be, does not mean it does not come from a poverty mindset. Okay. If you're going to build, if you're going to build, then there should be already a, a foundation, an established, you know, wealth within that family. So for example, if you're building, you need to have something to start with. So not from poverty, don't build from poverty. If he hasn't made it, then why would you combine your assets together? You know what I'm saying? If he's still broke and can't live the lifestyle that he wants, why would you combine your assets with his? No, never, ever, ever. I need to see what you can do before I even attempt to even think about it, which I, I won't even agree to, but before I can even think about it. So honestly, it's coming from a poverty mindset. And when you help build with someone who can't build for themselves, you're investing in something that's not going to probably be too too good when you could if you can do that by yourself if you're gonna build with somebody you can build by yourself you know that takes out the whole you know uh, husband wife relationship and turns you into partners or competition so I definitely don't like the um, whole building thing that's why I've, I always talk about don't be a barber the builder because being a barber the builder will get you left at the construction site okay don't do it and if you're already doing it then pull back stop building stop contributing stop doing all of those things that make you an equal partner because it's kind of masculine unless you're building for yourself then it's not it's not something that is going to be beneficial to you People had to build back in the days. And we don't live back then. I know this hairstyle is cute, but we don't live back then. People had to do what they had to do back then because of, um, you know, laws, prejudices, economy, um, you know, right after wars and da, 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 da. But now we live in the age of technology. We live in the age where anybody could be an entrepreneur. We live in an age where people can get rich overnight. And we don't need to reach back and try to pick up old poverty mindset of building together for survival. Now we need to think and marry for a provider, someone who's already built. Because you don't, like if you're going to have kids, you don't want to, you know, give those type of genes to them if those, you know, those type of um, men who want to build on a woman's back. You don't want to pass that on to your sons. You want them to see a man who can handle it all plus and, you know, be the type of father figure that they're supposed to be, or at least be a provider for the family and not, you know, mama has to do everything because when they grow up, that's what they're going to look for, a woman who can do everything. And we're trying to move away from that, especially, you know, um, when, there's so many single mothers out there. It's hard to find, you know, someone who thinks that a woman should be feminine and be taken care of. And da, 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 da. So what I'm saying is make sure you're not falling for the okie doke. I don't care how cute they are because money is cuter. I don't care, you know, how great they are in bed. 
because if you ain't if you are rolling around with a mattress on the floor on your paycheck when they lose their job, then it's going to be a different story. OK. And you don't want them to become dependent on you for anything like when it comes to decision making, like, should I buy this large, you know, whatever it is, or should I quit my job? Oh, yeah, because my, my wife can handle it or my woman can handle the bills for a few weeks. That shouldn't even cross their mind. That shouldn't even be a thought in their mind. Their mind needs to be made up to handle business, get the job done, be a provider, make sure their family is taken care of, wife, etc. Not, well, my woman can handle it because we're partners and she's helping me build. Or let me get a house or a uh, car outside of my own, you know, um, comfort zone as far as what I can afford financially because she'll pick up the slack in the other area. No, you need to live within his means, not y'all's means. Your money is your money. His money is y'all's money, especially if you're married and took his last name, or even if you didn't take his last name, but you still live under the same roof. You know what I'm saying? So it may be a little bit old fashioned, but it will pay off in the long run on how your kids view um, partners and how you don't have to pick up their slack or they don't have to depend on you and make stupid, dumb decisions. Okay. And besides, if they're smart and they can handle you know, paying for everything, they won't be making those stupid, dumb decisions. You don't want a man who's going to make stupid, dumb decisions based on your income instead of his. Okay. So don't even, that's why when, when men start asking about your income and what you do for a living, a conversation should be over and you should be moving on to the next because they're not trying to provide, they're trying to build and we don't build, baby. Okay, unless it's ourselves by ourselves, we don't need help if we already know how to build. So, um, if you believe in building wealth as a family, you know that's a little bit different, but not you don't go into a relationship with someone who starts to depend on you as a man because it takes their masculinity away, and you're no longer going to be attracted to him if you can do more and better than him. You know what I'm saying. Um, mm -hmm. he said you're in a relationship that pays the bills and he runs a business you're tired of doing it all looking for some help well then you better find some help like honestly I like I think it's because of like what I saw on TV growing up and what I think should be you know I don't I'm not I'm not your friend, sir. I'm, you know, you need to take care of me. I don't rescue men. They rescue me. You know what I'm saying? I don't pitch in. <laughs> okay, you bring me gifts of plenty. Period. That's my mindset. That's why I live the life that I live. That's why I won't bend. And because if you put your, when they say, oh, if you put your mind to something or if you make up your mind about something and you don't stray from it, you're eventually going to get it. That's the same with everything, you know? Um, so stop compromising what you want. It's hard, I know. So the men that you like may not be the men that are going to do this stuff for you. And I've learned throughout my entire life that they're not always going to match. What do you want more? What do you want more? Do you want to be provided for and taken care of? Or do you want to build and, uh, you know, be with someone who could drop you at any minute or drop their job at any minute thinking they can depend on you? I can't live like that. That's very stressful for me. And I don't like to be stressed out. I like to go to bed knowing everything is going to be paid whether I get up and do anything or not. I like sleep like that. That's some good sleep, I promise you. Okay, so um, everything else can be dealt with, okay? But wouldn't you like to go to bed? And even if you have your own money, wouldn't you like to go to bed knowing you got your own money plus someone else providing for you? And that it's just stacking up for you in the future or your kids or whatever you want to use it for. 
in the future, doesn't that feel good? Like it should. <laughs> so this is why I make these videos to help other women to make better decisions when it comes to selecting like who you want. Because, okay, let's say, okay, she was, she was, message is good, but I want to have this and this. I want this type of relationship with this man. And that. Well, is that relationship guaranteed for a long amount of time? Because people's feelings change. But usually, if they know how to go out and get that money, they always going to know how to go out and get that money. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I, I, I know from experience that money lasts longer than temporary feelings. Okay. <laughs> I'm just sure of it. I know. Especially if they know how to get it and keep it coming in, which is called stability and a foundation. It lasts a lot longer than some feelings some what they call honeymoon phase feelings, okay? Um, so make sure you understand that because when that feeling runs out, which it will, it always does, and then you just have regular feelings, at least you'll still have, you know, uh, money to um, comfort your lifestyle. That's what you need. And that's what your children and future generations need. Because anything else is going to go downhill and you're going to be left with less and it's going to lead uh, back to where you don't want to be financially. Okay. You said these men want to be alpha so bad they can't provide. That's just talk. Okay. Like honestly, you can't mention the word alpha and then ask for bill money at bill time. It doesn't go together. It never has. It never will. So you know, if you know bills are required to be paid, maybe you can be alpha the old fashioned way. But in these days, alpha is simply being the man, not a man, but the man, the man that pays for everything, the man that's in, in charge of his own fate in life and doesn't have to worry about where his next meal is coming from or if his wife is going to get up and go pay the bills because he's out of work this month because he cussed out his boss. For some reason, I don't know, but either way, a man is gonna be a man. And if you're not, if you can't pay all the bills in your house, you are not alpha, never was, never will be, unless you can figure out how to pay. Period. Shira, you love my hair. I want to ask how contact you. Wrong channel, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I appreciate you though. Go to my other channel. We can talk there, but I definitely appreciate your donation. Uh, I might go on that channel after this video, so uh, check me out over there. All right. Um, you said, uh, okay, H file, sprinkle, sprinkle, member in the house. Any other members here that I didn't shout out? I'm sorry. And I'll shout you out if, I, if you make another comment. Okay. Um, some men are confused to be alpha. You must provide. Period. Exactly. They need. To, they need to make. A video about that. You ain't alpha if you ain't provided. Goodbye. <laughs> if your wife ain't got no teacup like this. Actually, you're not supposed to put the pinky out. And sitting at home on a Monday doing her hair and makeup. You ain't no alpha. Bye. Um, <laughs> best grocery stores to work at to get the back. Girl, I don't know, girl. I'm not working at no grocery store to get no bag. I'll be in the parking lot looking at who's driving up, though, struggling with some groceries, looking for help. Um, that's how you work the grocery store. Okay. Or going down the aisle and ask, asking someone to reach something on the top shelf who's slightly taller than you. You said I'm not working with no man. Exactly. You shouldn't be clocking in if 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 you if this is a little bit foul, but you shouldn't be clocking in if he fitting in. You know what I'm trying? That's clocking in, okay? It's all right. That's enough. 
you shouldn't be clocking in if he getting in. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. If he getting in and you clocking in, something wrong, something off. There's a, there's no balance. And the way to fix that, I know a lot of people get mad because, you know, I say all this stuff and that's the situation they're in, but there's a way to fix it. Quit. <laughs> live within his means. If y'all can't live within his means and you mad at him because he broke, then y'all shouldn't be together. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I mean, that's very simple. If you quit your job and he can't provide for you on the same level, then are you supposed to be with him, darling? Uh huh. Yes, I'm gaining weight again. I'm glad you noticed. It's called eating good, darling. <laughs> I've already got my back. Honestly, I gain weight and lose weight. Um, my weight fluctuates. So and you're going to see it again and again, over and over. I was never skinny. I ain't never been skinny. But all my siblings who were skinny, they ain't, they fat now and they don't know how to get rid of it. <laughs> so I guess I'm good. I'm smaller than all of them. Um, due to my constant dieting, I know how to lose when I need to. Okay, so now y'all know. Yes, I'm fat. Who cares? I still have my bag. Some of y'all skinny out here starving with no bag. I'm trying to help y'all focus on this. <laughs> there you go. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Okay, so do we have to turn on the feminine charm all the time or can people catch us being bros? Um, I don't know because I'm usually that way in my house or just with my kids. When I'm out and about and trying to look cute and all that kind of stuff, that's what I'm about. So I think depending on why you're leaving your house, you know, it just depends. This is you see a starving with no bag. Okay, how you doing? I'm always gonna have my money. I'm always gonna be making moves. I'm always gonna be living the life that I want to live, and that's just how it's gonna be. Um. Okay. Never good to be the they bro. Don't take them seriously. Exactly. Like honestly, um, that's true. <laughs> as women how to know if you are ready for marriage when you are tired of working and paying your own bills and tired of not having your name on the deed or on the insurance policies and um making excuses to your family members as to why you haven't married yet it's time to get married darling that's what you feel deep down the side when you read it that's when it's time basically when you're ready, that's when it's time. When you're tired, you like, look, I'm ready to get married. I'm ready to give up, you know, the single life until they start acting crazy. Um, <laughs> I'm ready to try this marriage thing out and see if it works out. Then, yes, that's when it's time. Um. You said your mom's been splitting bills for 40 years. Well, like I said, back in the old days, that's what they did to survive. But now it shouldn't be like, and even a lot of people didn't do that back in the old days. You know, but some people did because they had to. But I'm saying you don't have to do that. And a lot of people compromise and they sacrifice to get exactly what they want. So some people have to sacrifice dating a certain type of man in order to get what they want. And some people have to sacrifice, you know, um, where they want to live or how they want to live to get the house that they want. Like, it just depends. Everybody has to choose and whatever you choose, that's what you want. Um, your mom and dad have been together since teenagers and they're 68. Wow. That's a long time. Um, but that's what, that was old school back then. Okay. We're not, we ain't back then. Even though it kind of looked like with this hairstyle, right? We're not back then, and people don't think like that anymore. You know, what works now is knowing your value, knowing your worth, and not compromising until you can get what you want. And there are totes, like back in the old days, 
it was like, if you don't get married by the time you're this age, you're an old mate. But nowadays, that's not true. So you can stay single um, until you are definitely ready to marry. There is no push on, you know, when are you going to get married? It's when you want to get married. Okay. We have technology now. Da, 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 da. They have, you know, um, freezing of the eggs. You got all this stuff to put your um, your self as a priority now. So do so. Don't settle and get what you want. And sometimes what you want, you may want it all. But when you get to a point where you have to choose because of, you know, timing. Okay, well, I, since I can't have it all right now, have this and then add to it later, you know, and or fulfill, you know, whatever it is with something different or better than I could have ever imagined, you know. So and remember, if you are going to have children, then you also got to consider that kids are expensive. You're going to be with a broke man. You're going to be working when you're nine months pregnant. Kids are expensive. Stop settling for building with some broke dude who can leave at any time, who can't afford to live the life that he wants to live with you included in it. If you can't afford me, then walk. That's what you need to, that's the attitude that women need to have. If you can't afford me alone, then walk. I don't need to contribute if you want me. If you're taking me off the market away from other potential, uh, you know, prospects that can provide, then I'm not doing anything. So that's, that's the mentality a lot of women need to have. Men don't like this because they don't want to do it all by themselves. If you can't do it all by yourself, then um, do more, save up, date. And then when you can do it all by yourself, then get married. There's nothing wrong with that. I'd rather wait for you to get yourself together than hope you get yourself together and you never reach your potential. Okay, and That's why a lot of women are dating older men because they've already gone through that and they, they got what they need. Young men, I don't expect you to, pay, to be able to provide fully for a woman's lifestyle. That's why you need to use your youth and your youthful years for building yourself and not asking a woman for help. OK, back then, you know, people didn't live as long as they're living now. So we have more time. We don't have to rush and get married because of a war. We don't have to rush and get married because our parents are pressuring us. We don't have to rush and get married because of, you know, tradition. We can we can take our time. You can take your time. Go get your money and then go get the woman you like, you know. That's how it that's how it usually is. And sadly, a lot of these men who are married to Bar Barbara, the builders, they're going to do that anyway. They're going to build with Barbara. And then when they finish building and other uh, young women or more attractive women are giving them the attention for all the stuff that Barbara built with them. They're going to divorce Barbara or cheat on Barbara and go get with the other chick who ain't lifted one finger and hand her everything. You know, so what I'm saying is don't be Barbara. Don't be stupid. If your name is Barbara, you know what I mean? Don't be Barbara the Builder. Okay. Yeah, hit the like button. Y'all sprinkle, sprinkle. Y'all should be hitting that like. Got 400 and something people in here. Yeah, I need to see 400 and something likes. Honestly. And if you don't like it, like it anyway. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. They always leave the woman that built them up. And, they, and I don't know why people don't see this pattern. There are very few men who stay with a woman who helped build them. Very few. Like you can count them on a hand. Okay. Very few. And you know they got some on the side. Her old love disciple sprinkle sprinkle. Member in the house. So you know they always do. So just prepare. If that's who you are and get you good settlement or whatever. But don't think y'all going to be together forever because you helped him build. You helped him build for the next. You helped him build him up for the next one. That's why they want you to help them build. They look for a builder. They never go up to someone who's looking like Beyonce and be like, hey, baby, will you help me from the ground up? They never go to someone looking like, you know, whoever diva. They go to someone looking like they can build and hard worker with a good steady paycheck who probably likes them more than they like her. That's a builder. If you're in this situation, look around and, and ask yourself, am I a builder? Probably if you feel like one, you are. If you got to ask that question, you probably are. Uh, been watching you since you were 19, you're 21. So I'm far along in terms of mindset. Uh-oh, sprinkle, sprinkle. Joshua, Joss, 
Joss Nelly, Sprinkle Sprinkle, appreciate that. My first job, I was a hostess, darling. I handed out menus, set people down, and smiled and looked pretty. It was my first job. Um, and I was like very young. Uh oh, Jaina, Sprinkle Sprinkle. You wish your nieces would listen to this type of message. Some of them will have to learn the hard way. And believe me, once they get that first lesson, they'll be back to uh, to get some information. <laughs> uh, how do you prevent your man from being stolen from you? You can't steal a man. They got to go on their own. Like, they don't kidnap men and hold them hostage and say, you mommy me in there. Men make a conscious decision to, to leave on their own. You know what I'm saying? If they like the other woman better, they're not stolen. They're making that decision on their own. So you can't really say, I stole... Um, a man or how do you prevent a man from being stole? A man makes their own decisions. You can't steal a man. If they like what they see over there, they going over there, period. Okay. You so say you don't like meeting you for anything, not even emotional support. <laughs> Exactly. Like, it's nice to have emotional support from a woman, but it shouldn't be like, well, I need this from you, so you need to give it to me. It should be optional because sometimes not everybody is going to be your emotional support, but it should be optional. Uh oh, Delilah, sprinkle, sprinkle. You always keep me on track, thanks. Uh oh, no, no problem, Delilah, sprinkle, sprinkle. Thanks for the, thanks for the donation. Um, being indoctrinated at those liberal institutions. Oh, they're being indoctrinated in those liberal institutions. Well, I mean, those liberal institutions don't make your own, like, don't replace your thoughts unless you allow them to. Like, if you know what you want, then even being in a liberal, you know, party or whatever, or mindset won't stop every thought that you've had as, you know, prior to that. Um, sorry, I had something in my eye. <laughs> you said independent women syndrome. Um, yeah, independent women syndrome comes from um, so many women being Barbara the Builders and learning their lesson the hard way. And so they, they don't want to put faith in a man anymore because they felt like they were, you know, messed over. And that's true. Now they just do whatever they need to do themselves. But the truth is, if you're an independent woman, then you definitely only need to be dating a provider and save your money. That's it. Most independent women, they don't really need a provider man. But the reason why they act independent is because they wanted a provider man. Okay. And they didn't get what they wanted and they probably got messed over. Oh, Rosanna, sprinkle, sprinkle. So literally... More independent women prefer provider men, honestly. If you are with a very independent woman, provide everything. And that wall of independence and I can do all this by myself will start to come down. And slowly but surely, she'll start to come around and be able to um, allow you in emotionally or Whatever. And trust more. Yeah. If you're caught, okay. If you're calling him stolen, he's a victim, right? He's not a victim. Um, what things should you be finding out about a man on a first date? Um, I wouldn't act like it's an interview. I would just ask normal questions that will allow him to expand on the things that I would like to know. Like, you know, how was your day? What did you do today? It's going to, he's going to fill in the blanks for you. You don't even have to ask specific questions. Like, what did you do today? And how was your day? Um, do you have any vacation plans coming up soon? You know, all that's going to tell you what you need to know in a roundabout way. So don't ask specific questions unless you just try to get rid of them or you already know that he's smitten and that he's going to do whatever you want. But if you're just trying to get information without looking like you're doing an interview and trying to see how much money he has, ask simpler questions. That 
he can fill in all the details on. Okay. Um, let's see. How do you improve your relationship with money? Make more. Swirk, sprinkle. <laughs> Date people with money. Get more money. There you go. Sprinkle, sprinkle. That's how you improve your relationship. <laughs> don't do nothing unless you're getting paid. Period. Okay. Don't be nice. Don't overdo it. Give, like... Give and receive. Don't give too much if you ain't receiving nothing in return. Unless you want to, like, it's like your kids or something or, you know, someone, like, gift or whatever. But don't give more of yourself than other people are giving to you. That's my best relationship with money. Um, don't try to prove something by buying expensive gifts and trying to prove yourself. They're supposed to be buying more expensive gifts for you. Um, you you remember that, okay? Remember <laughs> so anyway and you know having to build with someone always constantly it's like you're always keeping tabs tit for tat like oh I pay for this or you need to pay for that or I pay for this or I did that it's always going to be something thrown back up in the face and keeping tabs and whatnot so you're going to argue more about money, even if you're building with each other. And then if you do separate or get a divorce, you're going to be like, well, I did this and I did that. And without this, you couldn't do this. And there's going to be a lot of emotional tearing down and putting down. And that's why a lot of women lose their self-esteem when they build with a man, because they built and built and got very little from it while the man got more. Because naturally, when you see a couple and you see someone that has a really nice lifestyle, you automatically think that's all the man. No one ever really gives the woman the credit unless they really know. Like when they see a man pull up in front of his house in a nice car, they oh, he's got money. Not, oh, his wife must be rich or his wife must have money or his wife must have helped him build this. Men get most of the credit for the lifestyle that you built. That's why he ends up usually taking that credit and using it to find or, you know, fund other people's lives or find a younger woman and leave you and da, 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 sell the house, split it. You get, you know, go, get to live in a house, half the value as the one that you built. So you need to start thinking, stop building with these men and start getting this money and have them build for you. That's it. So. Let's, for example, let, let, let's say like you don't help a man build. He's a provider and it's time for divorce. You gonna get half the house that you never built or paid for or the whole house. You're going to benefit. You see what I'm saying? But if you build the house, you're going to have to downsize unless your money is increased enough. And then, you know, whatever, whatever. But what I'm saying is you're not you're going to lose instead of gain so provider like uh women who build usually lose in divorce rather than gain and that's all so you need to think about that too even if, if you plan on never getting divorced that's fine but at the same time you also need to realize that you're making him look good to the next woman and not the other way around you're not looking good to the next man because you, you're tired from working and building up your man to look good for other women. And you're taking care of the house that y'all built, trying to pay these bills, trying to make sure you don't get sick because you can't afford to take off because you've got to pay half these bills and stuff like that. You're going to age yourself prematurely compared to this man who's working half as much as he should to be providing, you know, 100 percent for you or at least 99%. So you're under undue stress, trying to raise family, have kids, and worry about if your man is flexing with your money somewhere, <laughs> driving a car he can't afford, pulling up to a house he can't afford by himself. Why are you doing this, ladies? Don't live like that. I don't know why. I think people are such, you know, I think they're so much smarter than this, but they just want to look like they have more than what they have. Do you really have that if you don't have it alone? And, you know, are you able to start your own business if you want to? Or are you stuck in a rotation of jobs because you have to pay bills on time? You don't have the time to go out and be creative and, and start your own business if you want to. 
or whatever, um, because you're you can't take time off because you're building with a man. Mm -mm. Your life's supposed to get easier when you get married, not harder. Y'all keep forgetting. If your life got harder when you got married, you you married wrong. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> If your life got harder when you, it's more stressful, then you did it wrong. You know, you just need to un, unload all that and say, you know what? I quit my job. You're the husband. You're the provider. This is what you're going to do. If we got to live below these means that we're living at because I was contributing. That's what, that's what y'all should have been living at in the first place. <laughs> do not factor my money into it, anything. That you <laughs> and why, 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 why are women so selfish? Why, why, why? Because we have usually end up with the kids if there is a divorce, and we usually are going to live longer than the men anyway. So we need we need to save our money. We don't need to be all doing extra when well, we need to be focused on you know our children, our you know, and ourselves, our business. Da, 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 da. We got longer. We got longer to live. Um, how to be a nurturer feminine energy to a man that is considered a pick me behavior? Act for the little amount of time you can stand it. I mean, if you have deep feelings for someone, it shouldn't be that hard. But if it feels forced and unnatural, then don't you don't you just need to find a good act and put that on and eventually they'll know it's an act and you know, they'll, they'll be fine. They won't come to you as much, but if you are like, I, I say, you know, nurturing feminine, like things like that are reserved more for children. Um, and I think it's more, more reserved for children, like nurturing and things like that. Like who's there to nurture you as a woman? I'm just going to ask the question. Who's there to nurture you as a woman? Is, is, you said he should be. You said no one. Exactly. So why do you have to do that? That's for your children. You nurture your children when they fall and they get a little scratch or they, you know, something happens at school. That's your, that's who you nurture. No world man don't need you to nurture them. Ooh. They need to get up and dust themselves off and go back out there and do what they got to do. Now, if it's like, you know, um, just normal things that you need to talk about with someone and exchange energy, like emotional energy, like, oh, I had a bad day, honey. Well, that's too bad. Tomorrow will be better. I'm sure you're smart. You'll figure it out. That's that's the amount of nurturing that that they're talking about. That's fine. You know, positive reinforcement. I don't believe in coddling anybody and handicapping them and treating them like a pet unless they are a pet or a child. Because it only weakens them. And I, I don't know. Oh, Lydia, sprinkle, sprinkle, can you please speak on why women are raised to be picnics and where the misogyny comes from? Because back in the old days, that's how their parents or their mothers were, and that's how they taught their daughters because they didn't know any better. But now we have our own mind to make, I have our own mind to make up. How do we want to live? Do we want to live like that or should we be living better? You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't care what other women are raised to be. After the age of 18, you make your own decisions and you can change your mind before that, if you want, by who you choose to date and why you're choosing to date them. No one can put in your mind why you need to date someone unless you accept it. So if you've been told all your life, you need to date someone because you love them and they love you um, and not to date someone just because or to marry someone who's a provider or you need to get out there and work hard. Da, da, da. Working hard never got nobody rich. It just got somebody to work harder and harder and harder until it was time to retire. You know what I'm saying? Work smarter, not harder. And working smarter also includes marrying a provider. So you work less 
and still get your money by starting your own business. So I say choose the intelligent route. Work smarter, not harder. You can stay single and work. There ain't nothing worse than coming home after a long day of work to a man who came home after a long day of work to some kids y'all barely know because they have been to daycare or over to the babysitter's house and feeling extra feminine and pretty um, or, or the man feeling extra masculine and sexy. Uh, I mean, you barely have enough time for each other. So at least have some type of balance. Mm -hmm. Some people barely know their kids because they always at work because they married the wrong type of dude. But like I said, people were so like, that's why I call it poverty mind. They want to live above their means. So they say, well, if we team our money together, we can live like this grand lifestyle, but you don't get to enjoy it. You don't get to be there. You know what I'm saying? And now unless y'all are both professionals and can afford that lifestyle individually on your own, um, that's a different story because there's nothing lost. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, if whoever wants to fill the masculine role or wants to feel, you know, like they're the head of the household or whatever, that's who's going to pay all the bills. Now, it, it just depends on the type of job, and how much money you make whether you want to contribute or not, if it's not, you know, necessary or if it's optional, that's different. If it's optional. If you don't want to work, your man can pull all, pull it all. If that's optional, that should be your option. If you do want to work as a woman or own your own business, it should be an option, not a necessity. That's it. Mm hmm. Your starter boyfriend doesn't like that you spend so much time putting on makeup. He recently paid for lipo, BBL, veneers. Now I'm dressing classy and using makeup. Okay, wonderful. I don't like. Why does it matter what he likes? It's about you, right? Sprink, sprinkle. Who cares? This is not about him. Obviously, it's not. If he didn't pay for all that stuff, it still it, it never was about him. Who cares what he likes? He's still going to cater to you. Right? I mean, you, don't you know that by now? It doesn't matter. <laughs> mm -hmm. You said red pill guys blame women of hyper hypergamy. What is your thoughts on that? I don't care what broke man think. Why would I care what a broke man think? Doesn't help me out. Okay. Why am I why am I wasting my time thinking about what a broke man thinking about? I'm gonna be broke too if I start thinking like a broke man. What the heck? What are y'all doing? Why do y'all put so much emphasis on what a broke dude thinks? Y'all should be reading um books on you know how to get this money. Why y'all worried about what a broke man thinks? I don't care what a broke man thinks, do you? Never have, never will. Waste of my time. Waste of your time. Why do why do women put so much emphasis on what the type of man that they don't want thinks? You are you going to consider all those things before you choose a man that's the opposite of that? No, because you shouldn't even be worried about it. Sprinkle, sprinkle, you live with your mom and but your boyfriend wants to move in after he remodels. What? Wants you to move in after he remodels. Friends say to stay at home. Should I get my own apartment? Um, I would wherever you can save the most money. If he if he's gonna fully provide, you want to live with him, great. But if you gotta pay any bills, then stay exactly where you are. Sprinkle, sprinkle. If you gotta pay, stay where you are. I hope that helps. If he's gonna pay, then and you want to live there, then go ahead. You ain't got nothing to lose. What does it mean when a guy is mean to you after you and him break up? 
Um, it means that y'all broke up and y'all and that he is mad because he wanted you still. <laughs> okay, sprinkle, sprinkle. I don't know. Or he's mad about the reason for the breakup. I don't know. I have no idea. Maybe you should ask. You are 20 and thinking of ways to fund your college education since parents can't any advice on what on do you have for me? If you cute, you can go get you a sugar daddy, girl. Mm. Whatever business that you, or whatever thing you want to go to college for, you need to find a sugar daddy in that field who will fund your education. Even if you got to lie until you pick your major. Just go find whoever's gullible enough and be like, I want to go to school to be a lawyer. I want to go to school to be a doctor and I need, I, my parents can't help me. I, I'm, I look, I so look up to you. You're so smart. You know, I just really, I guess I can work in the, you know, at the cocktail waitress. Well, let me help you pay for that. You know, all you got to do is go on some dates, baby. With, with men who have careers, who will fund you. Because there's nothing more a man really feels accomplished is when he can like help someone in his own field or that wants to be in his own field. So he can like feel like he has someone to teach or to mentor or because, you know, especially when they're that age, they kind of feel useless at home because either their kids are grown or their wife don't care. They're not special to their wife no more. So he, like you're in awe of this older guy who's, you know, in the prime of his career and he got that money and he, he paid for the books and, and tuition. <laughs> Maybe even help you get into one of the college he went to, girl. You don't know. You might be on the alumni. Yes, sugar day. Yes. All right. Um, see a tuition daddy. Okay. Yeah, a lot of women are educated but married and don't work. <laughs> or not in the field that they were educated in. You know, they're not doing the career that they had majored in. Yes. I say the smartest women marry rich and then worry about what they're gonna do. Or marry a provider and then worry about what they're gonna do. Because it's easier to figure stuff out when you have less stress. It really is. Oh, Vanessa, sprinkle, sprinkle. I do, but I want. To wait till marriage or before. Thank you. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, honestly, if you wait till you marry to live with somebody, what if they have disgusting habits that you can't stand and y'all argue over? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I feel like, you know, if I didn't live with somebody before I married, we would be divorced. Okay. That's just me, though. There could be something that you totally do not like, and then they you marry somebody that ended up doing it, and you just, ugh. Why did I do this? Some people just can't live together. That's all I'm saying. And I think I'd rather know before I got married than after I got married. Is getting pregnant by a provider a good idea or waiting till things possibly progress into marriage? Which one will get me the bad most affected? Um, depending on the situation, if you know he'll marry you because you're pregnant or because you'll have a child together, wonderful. If you are... Um, he might think it's a trick if you try to get pregnant before you get married. So um, maybe just depending on your needs, do what you got to do. That's, I mean, it's your life. What do you need right now? You know, do you see this person as a long term, you know, husband, father material for you and the baby or you just want his money? And do you want to raise a child? Or co-parent with the child and not be married, possibly. Because you could possibly get married. It's all a possibility. What do you need right now? You know what I'm saying? If you have plenty of options, I would definitely hold off on trying to get pregnant and keep all my options open so I can go any, many, many more and choose the one that treats me the best and gives the most. And that's why I'm going. Then after the marriage, I would get pregnant. But and if you if you don't have options and you think this is your last straw and this is only the one you can pull and if you don't get pregnant right now you're not gonna have any more options then do what you gotta do. 
<laughs> if you want him long term, just wait. That's right. You got options, you can wait. You ain't got no options, or you this is my last chance. <laughs> you said build with a man and he will stay with you, although he's cheating. Exactly. Um, honestly, even if you don't build with a man, he could still end up cheating. So imagine how you would feel if you how, imagine how you would feel if you were building with him and he was cheating. Even worse. I'd rather be letting him cheat by not lifting no fingers and being able to do the same thing without losing anything. You gotta, you gotta think about that. They're gonna cheat anyway. So you might as well not slave away at someone else's job and hand him half the money at deal time. Okay? Because if he can afford to cheat, then you don't need to be working. That's all I'm saying. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Exactly. If you can afford to cheat, then I don't need to be working. Shoot. I like it, but it's lifelong learning since tech is always changing. Okay, y'all are talking about careers. No woman is in the danger zone. If you look good and date older, you'll always be the prize, even though it's an old lady. That's true. Um, should women lose weight before dating? No, nope. they should start dating. And they should date whoever they want. And if, if as they're losing weight, they'll see differences in who's approaching, who's not, and what type of men are approaching, and what how they act around them. And da, da, da. it's a learning thing. And I wouldn't wait till I'm skinny to date them. You may not ever get skinny. Just go date some men like women of all sizes or whatever, whatever. But it's not going to stop you. It shouldn't stop you from dating because um, your dating is experience. And you're learning men and how they treat you and how they treat you based on looks. And you learn how important your looks can be and how to use them. And, you know, da, 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 da. you keep dating no matter what. What, what you going to do? Wait till you get skinny? I'm going to go do what I need to do. And I'll do that on the way. They might can help pay for your weight loss or whatever. Your groceries, your expensive, you know, um, training or whatever you need, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. Date at older. You said date way older. Exactly. I'm trying to tell you, I, I was like, when I was bigger, I was pulling them still. I don't know how. I was like, well, y'all, okay. I guess it was just how I was put together in my confidence. But I was I was pulling them when I was bigger too. I was shoot. Business owners and everything. <laughs> but you you gotta know it's it's about your confidence. I mean, yeah, I was pulling them even faster when I was thinner, but you still pull it when you Cause like some guys are big or they were tall and you know like I was getting them tall big ones. Oh, I look small compared to them. Shoot. <laughs> H foul hello. Sprinkle sprinkle. Oh, okay. It's older than your mom. If you break up, he can have some dicks. <laughs> ha ha. That's funny. Mm hmm. You told her your husband your hair is going to cost 2500 when it's only 500. Girl, you smart. Sprinkle, sprinkle. It's your preference. You've got to know what you want, what Amazon wants. What? what? Mm hmm. So, yeah, make sure you're getting the life you want because eventually. You don't want to be, I don't know how old some of y'all are, so I don't want to offend anyone when I just men mention a random age as an older older person. You don't want to be like close to your 50s or you know mid 50s still having to go clock in or work somewhere and give your, I don't know how old your husband is, money at you know bill paying time. You don't want to have to be doing that. You should be living your best life and relaxing, 
going on vacation or starting your business or crafting or playing with your kids or your, your grandkids or whatever. You shouldn't be worried about no bills at that age. You've been married that long. If you're still worried, you can't sleep good at night due to stress, then you married the wrong type of man. Uh-oh. Should fear no agent, you said? Should you live with a man before getting married to him? I'm worried about giving too much access to me, as you talked about before. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Honestly, if I don't have to pay any bills, you gonna, if you're not sleeping with him anyway, like if, y'all, y'all got to be more specific. Are you sleeping with him already? Just don't cook, don't clean. Tell her me. I don't know. I'm not doing no wife duty. I, you ain't getting no food from me. You cooking for me. You know, flip the scripts. If you if, Living with someone doesn't mean being their maid. I, can't, I, can't, I have to keep telling y'all. If you if you ain't sleeping with them, why are you moving in with them? That's what y'all move in for, to sleep together. What y'all doing? This, did I miss something? People usually move in together to sleep with him. If you're already sleeping with him, then that doesn't mean when you move in, you automatically become the maid. In fact, he need to be cooking and cleaning for you. You sleeping with him? Shoot. If it, when I moved in with James, I didn't cook, I didn't clean, but I still got that ring. Okay. Don't mean you become the maid. When you move in with a man, if he thinks he's got a maid, then he better be hiring one from an agency or whatnot, because that doesn't mean you are there to cook and clean. Or do laundry. Okay, you do la- do your laundry. If you're hungry, cook something for yourself. If he's not around, throw something in the microwave, eat for yourself. If he says he's hungry, ask him where we, where he's taking you to eat. I don't know. But I'm not getting rid. You don't turn into a maid because you move into a house. And you don't turn into a maid just because you get married either. Okay. This is a good time to teach him that you ain't nobody's maid. And that he's going to have to hire some extra help if he wants you to be his wife. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> or he going to have to do all of that because you're not doing it. See, it'll get, give him a chance to get to know what type of wife you're going to be. The kind that ain't going to do all of that stuff. And does he still want to marry you? If not, then who cares? You did not lose anything. You got rent. rent you lived rent free. Was catered to. And probably got to save some of your money. You said you're waiting till marriage. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, if you're if y'all are traditional like that, then that's understandable. But I need I, I need them to know straight up what marriage ain't is and ain't gonna be. I'm not getting ready to fool them. They're going to know exactly what they're getting. So they can't be like, you didn't say this and you didn't say that. Well, you know how I was. You know I wasn't going to work. You know I wasn't going to cook. You know I wasn't going to clean on a regular basis. You know I was going to have to hire a maid. You already knew this. But you wasn't thinking because you were getting some, something else that you really like. And so now we're here. So continue. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so for me, I'm good in either way. I, I don't follow tradition. I just I do what I want. If he's older, he ain't ever gonna get sick of you anyway, because you're young and cute. If he, if y'all the same age, girl, good luck. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, <laughs> good luck. You gonna need it. Um, you get bored after four hours and want to tend to your things. Yeah, y'all better have a lot in common too. As long as he's a provider and you good and you you're fine with everything, then wonderful. Oh yes, it's starting to rain. Yes. I've been wanting rain because it's been so hot. <laughs> Do you think you can make a video on improving your body image? Yes. You just dress nice and be confident 
and you look good and your body image is automatically improved. If you want to be skinny, go on a diet. If you want to lose weight, exercise and go on a diet. Uh, if you want to improve your body image, dress for your body and have the confidence because confidence carries you. I've seen skinny women and thinner women who have no body confidence and get passed over for thicker women or fatter women because of their confidence. It just depends on your confidence. At any weight, you should be able to pull. So, you know what I'm going? Because I always, I was always able to do that. Love you, Queen. Keep doing what you do. Spark, spark on. Appreciate you. Yes, I was like, I was probably this same size when I got married. So, I mean, it doesn't matter. As long as you got that confidence and you know who you are, it's good. Mm -hmm. You kind of like to talk to your mom about what you kind of scared. Okay. Go hear that ring. Yeah, confidence is very important because let me tell y'all something. See if James was here. I ain't never met a man who didn't want to go on a date or turn you down because you got a few extra pounds. Okay. <laughs> I ain't never met a man. Mm hmm. You have to be focused on yourself and not look under him. Be happy when he's not home. Have your own stuff. That's right. You say you evil. Okay. It's rain. Yes. How to not lose yourself when you're in a relationship, you're sleeping with a man, and you tend to get really attached to him. Let yourself go. <sighs> well, that's easy to do when y'all are dating and eating and sleeping together and all that kind of stuff. But you also um, got like try to have like a girls' night out. Where or like you get, go out with other women and y'all put y'all cute outfits on and go out alone sometimes and try to keep that on a schedule or even if it's just by yourself or with family members, keep that that way you you'll try to at least keep yourself on a level that you want to go out and be seen with. Mm -hmm. You got a role. You still got a role as a woman, girlfriend, all that. Stay pretty. Exactly. What do you, whatever you do, don't be with a man you're attracted to. Exactly. Sad. Um, you eat twice a day, protein breakfast and protein lunch. Well, do whatever y'all gotta do to feel the, the best that y'all can feel. Okay? That's key. Confidence is key. And, you know, it also helps to know what you want, okay? Because depending on what you want, that's how you're going to live your life. That's how you're going to look. That's how you're going to put yourself together. It all depends on what you want. You don't have something, you're going to compensate in order to get it. Okay? So depending on where you are in your life, that's how you're going to live in order to get and maintain or whatever the lifestyle that you're trying to have. Okay. How do we know what we want if you don't have it and you want it? That's how you know. This is what I want. I don't have it. Let me go do what I need to do to get it. Mm-hmm. Please give tips on how to speak in classy way and build charisma. Um, it's called acting. It's like when you go on that job interview and you're like, yes, I'll be there on time every day. I might even be early. You just enunciate extra and you smile and you be extra fake. And then when they leave the room, you're back to yourself. If that's how you are naturally, then wonderful. Some people aren't like me. I am not that way, but I can totally act that way if necessary. <laughs> that's how you do it. You just act. 
What do I think about the dangers of using men? The same thing that men think about the dangers of using women. <laughs> That's what I think. The dangers of using women are much more are much worse than the dangers of using men. Okay. I think it's less dangerous than when a man uses a woman. How to get men to commit to marriage after one year and a half? Be old. Make sure he older. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think so. Like I don't believe in that, so I couldn't. I couldn't answer that question. Unless y'all both old and ain't got that much time left to live on this earth, I think you should definitely know someone longer than that to get married. If y'all are trying to wait to have sex to get married, that's why y'all trying to rush to the sack and go to get married. And go have y'all sex. I don't know. But for me, take that, I would take that out of the equation because I'm not going to jump into some marriage because I want to sleep with somebody. <laughs> that might be the wrong reason to get married. Honestly, if y'all trying to wait to sleep with each other before you get married, then I don't know. Go get married in Vegas and have it an old sleep together and be done. See if you want to stay married. I don't know. I just, I don't feel like you get to know someone in a whole year. I think it takes longer. Sorry. It takes a lot longer. I'm not getting ready to marry you after one year and see what you can do. <laughs> now, if you see what he can do and you like and you, you know he's the one or whatever, then you need to make up a fake story about how you got to go. How you got to leave, how you got a job offer somewhere from far away, you got to move. Like, unless there's something to keep you here, you know, like marriage, you would reconsider. I got this wonderful job opportunity in a whole different state, but I would turn it down, you know, if, if I were getting married or something. Girl, if he send you on your way, he ain't the one anymore. What do you say to a man who are persistent in asking for news? Sending him a news of a man. You didn't say what kind of news. Send, send him some news of a man. Here go some news. Somebody sent me. I just thought I'd recycle. Here you go. All right. You'll never ask the game. Make it funny though, like you have a sense of humor with it. Like send send him news of like something funny or weird. <laughs> or famous people who have posed nude. Just don't send him you. Photoshop your head on it and be like, have good luck, have fun. So he knows it's photoshopped and it's like a joke. What state would you say has the most men that want to marry? I don't know about me. Girl, I don't know. The crate, the old, old where they are older. Florida, where everybody old, retired, got that good chick, retired with their millions. I have no idea. I didn't know there was a specific state. Okay, what about the right time? Just decisions making about more kids, marriage, all that. When he is not at the time you want to. Honestly, I'm gonna do what I want when I want. He better be able to afford it. That's why you only marry uh, men who are providers and can afford it at any time. Don't be worried about the timing is right. It's time, the right time is when you have it. <laughs> okay. That's one thing I don't agree with. And a lot of people could get mad at me for this. If you're a woman, and you want to have a family or a baby and you're married or you got a boyfriend and you, they having sex with you unprotected, it's time right then because there's your chance right there. Whenever you want, do it. I don't care what you think. you still going to have to provide. You the daddy. If you, don't, if you don't want children, stop having sex. 
Okay. You don't want children. Wrap it up. Okay. It takes two. So obviously you want some because you're acting like you do. That's how you need to think. There's no discussion. It's your body. And he's sleeping with you, then he won't kids. Because that's how you make them. It's like you in the kitchen. You putting ingredients into a bowl and stirring it up, turning the oven on. You just going to, what? What you going to do? You, you in there cooking? You obviously want to eat. You in there doing the do, you might obviously want children because that's how they're made. Okay. Girls want a man like Donnie British. I don't even know who that is. But don't want to be submissive like Bill Gates. Don't have this. Women mostly only submit to money and providers. And submission doesn't mean they do whatever you say. It means they don't challenge you and they don't question you because they trust your um, decision-making skills when it comes to the financials. So they pretty much think you're smart and they don't have to hold your hand through everything or they trust you to do the right thing because you're smart and you figured this out and how to provide and be paid, you know? So submission doesn't mean what you think it means. It just means a woman trusts you enough with her finances and, you know, making major decisions because you've got thus far. It doesn't mean that she's going to do whatever you say. Most men don't realize that a woman won't submit because she don't trust you and she thinks you're stupid. <laughs> just saying, like, it's just the truth. Women don't submit. They talk over you. They put you in your place because they don't feel like you're smart or you can handle certain things. It's not about dominance. It's about you, you're too stupid. Okay? If you've ever seen a very smart man their wife is more submissive or they talk way, way less because they trust their man enough to speak on both of their behalves um, and to make good, solid foundation. I mean, to make to have a good, solid foundation and make good financial decisions because they're smart. You got a dumb idiot. You're not going to let them speak for you. You're going to correct them when they're wrong because you don't want to be, you know, um, associated with the dumb idiot. And you also don't have like or trust them making financial decisions on their own because they're stupid. OK, so a lot of men don't realize that it's not a woman not wanting to submit to you it's because you're dumb. And a lot of women have to play dumb in order to get along with you so you can feel manly. But when it comes to real decisions that are being made, they have to step in and, you know, claim their dominance or they won't submit to you because you're not, they don't trust you because you're stupid. That's just the truth. <laughs> it's not about, oh, I want to rule and dominate. It's like you too stupid to rule and dominate. That's basically it. So if you have a very smart man, you'll see more of a quote unquote Submissive woman. Mm -hmm. You said you said it. She was seven as a closet pick me. No, there's no such thing as a closet pick me. Because I have uh, options. You can't be a pick me if you got options, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I got this option, this option, this option. Now, who will I pick? You know, but you know, it's nice that you think of me in that way. I, I can't help your fantasy, sir. Fantasize whatever you like, don't make it true. All right. I don't have the options that I want. Okay. If you don't have the options that you want, then work and take you do have the options you want. That means work on yourself until the options that you want present themselves. Mm -hmm. 
closet pick me in denial of true nature. Yes, please pick me, sir. Make sure you have some money before I uh, I become a pick me for you. If if I become a pick me for anybody, y'all already know who it will be. <laughs> There's only one person that will ever get that privilege. Sprinkle, sprinkle. He said he a closet dust girl. He ain't even in the closet being a dusty with that name. <laughs> girl, he out the closet as a dusty. Mm -hmm. A lot of men have the 50-50 mindset now and getting scary. Even the man in their 40s, then let them have that. They obviously don't have the 100% get their money mindset so let them have it Shoot. who wants a man with a 50 50 mindset they need a hundred percent ambition go get it mindset i don't want that i don't want my kids inherited to that dna keep it moving okay that's just how i'm thinking like i don't care what their mindset is it's not what i want they can have any type of mindset that they like it's not for me <laughs> okay I'm not passing that down to my kids. What do you do when your husband is DL but a great provider? Is DL but a great provider? Keep getting his money and don't sleep with him. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Go get you something on the side too. I don't know. <laughs> Sounds like a plan to me. It's like, okay, you're on the deal. I ain't finna give you none because you're obviously getting it from somewhere else. Let me go get me some from somewhere else and you just keep paying these bills and we good. No one has to know. You said you don't believe that they want to be 50-50 because a lot of women these days act like men. What well, I mean... What kind of man, though? A 50-50 man? Because <laughs> if they acting like a whole man, they're going to be paying 100%. You know what I'm saying? If you're, if a man wants 50-50 out of a woman, then why is he with her if she's masculine? You know what I'm saying? She might as well pay the whole thing. Or we'll get you an extra masculine woman so you don't have to even put in 50%. You already going halfway, might as well. All right. Might as well go for the whole thing. Go get you a sugar mama. Sprinkle, sprinkle. If I was a man and I was trying to go 50 50, I'd just go get me a sugar mama and just forget it. You know, you are already looking bad to the woman. You might as well be the prize if you're going to. Have your hand out at rent time, uh, bill paying time anyway. Shoot. Go on here and just go on across the line. Be like, I'm just going to get me a sugar mama. At least I get more respect. <laughs> and spoilt. Right? You said Jezebel? I hope, I hope that's a compliment. <laughs> so, you know, people are naming their child that these days. What's your name? My name is Jezebel. My mom knew exactly the lifestyle she wanted for me. You see a 50-50 men get blocked? They sure do. It's sad to know that these days a lot of 40s down low black men think they don't need to work or provide. I don't know. I don't care what they think. I'm not worried about what they think. Like I said, I don't worry about what broke men think. If you if you have that mindset, you're never gonna be paid anyway. You know what I'm saying? Get your money. Honestly, if a man if a man has that mindset, he's never gonna be paid anyway. Don't worry about it. If he can't get it on his own, he shouldn't want you to get it for him. He couldn't even he couldn't even be proud of himself for making it thus far if if it was, you know, if you didn't contribute. I you know, that that's not the type of man you want. You want the type of man that already got it and, and goes and finds the woman he actually wants and, and, and says, okay, this is for you. I built all this for you, not the other way around. If you, if you begging somebody for money or uh, bill paying time, you're not no man, you might as well go get you a sugar mama and 
make all her cougar dreams come true and live the life that you really trying to live. Other than that, mm -hmm. you said who broke my heart? I don't know. A, a lot of people break my heart, but that doesn't a lot it doesn't mean that it it when someone breaks your heart, it just means that you learn a lesson. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean you can't love anymore. Like I love I love more than I feel like I should. But it doesn't mean you can't love anymore. It just means you're not gonna make the same stupid mistakes over and over. You know what I'm saying? But let me see who broke my heart. Probably my first boyfriend, maybe my second boyfriend. Um, how many women have broken your heart, sir? Or me, whatever you want. You're honestly tired of dating men who are too feminine now. And actually, I didn't even know what heartbreak was, so I don't even know if my heart was broken or not. I mean, how would you know your heart was broken at 16 or 17 or 18? Who do you have to compare to? It just, I don't know. Like That's a weird question. But whoever broke my heart, good for them. I don't know. I don't know if it was even heartbreak or not. Because I had nothing to compare it to. Okay. How do you steer conversation away from sex? Money. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Talk about money. <sighs> Tires. Unnecessary expenses that have all of a sudden entered into your life. This money. Mm -hmm. He said nothing was ever the same after the first heartbreak. I guess, yeah. Mm -hmm. Adam was a provider. He had the whole world. When he was in her masculine trying to make decisions for her husband. She was um, Adam already had a wife, but he wanted her to submit. And she said, forget you, Adam, and left. Then, then quote, unquote, Eve was created for Adam. And he's, Adam wasn't a real man because no woman wanted to submit to him. Wasn't masculine enough. <laughs> I don't know. He said that was a joke. Seriously. But like, think about it. You got two women in a row, and none of them want to do what you say. Something wrong. That's why I had to go figure it out. You ain't made enough, Adam. All right. That means you can't control women, no matter how hard you try. You ain't gonna control don't no, you're not controlling it. They're gonna do what they want. Wait, Adam could control woman, God could control woman. We do what we want. <laughs> what do I look for in a long term partner? Long long term assets. Sprinkle sprinkle. Mm -hmm. They love to refer to Adam and Eve's story to say women ruined the world. Now, it depends on how you look at the story. That story can be looked at in so many ways. I mean, whatever you get out of it, you it when it's necessary. God can control a woman. Adam can control a woman. Obviously, you ain't going to do it either. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I'll pull that out when I need it one day. Yes. Um, <laughs> biblical Bible study with Shira. Okay. He said, I'm cold-blooded, but I'm correct at the same time. Mm-hmm. The love, they love to refer you. Yeah, I read that already. 
But honestly, besides money, what do I look for in a long term? Someone who's going to do more for you. Who enjoys it, actually. It's very hard to find someone who's in, who enjoys doing for you. What troll? I don't see no troll. Is a troll up in here? What are characteristics of building with a boy? What? If they ask you for anything, sprinkle, sprinkle. Financially. If they ask you anything to contribute financially, that's he trying to build. Don't do that. <laughs> you have a client who is a millionaire due to her ex-husband. He left her and got with the bum. What kind of mindset is that? I don't know. Oh, she got with a bum? I guess she was tired of dating a millionaire and wanted to do something different. She already got some money. Nah, she's the cougar. Mm -hmm. She got her a sugar baby, huh? What? How to cope if the guy leaves you with kids? Even though he's rich, you don't have to go back to work. Child support is limited. Don't you have to go back to work. If he's rich, you don't ever have to go back to work. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's, it, it is confirmed I am benefiting, but I want more. Ha, ha, ha. So I keep my options open until this hypothetical marriage. Okay. Sounds sounds like a plan. Hey, Sherry, her hair is cute. Thank you, Sprinkle Sprinkle. And I know a lot of men don't like these type of videos, and I don't care what poor broke men think. What 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 type of man wants a woman who's, who has to help him anyway? You can't even hold your head up and, and feel like a man no more. She's going to be right there behind you listing off all the stuff she done paid for. So I don't know. You said we're not broke world. You're not rich enough to not have to worry about a woman paying for some bills and some money. Okay. So to me, that's broke. Uh, if you if you need or feel it's necessary for a woman to give you any type of money at bill paying time, you broke to me. Okay. You might not be broke to other people. But to a woman that you want to be with, that's broke. Okay, That's why I'd say if you don't think that you should pay for everything and be a provider for a woman, then you don't need a woman. If you think a woman should pay, go half and go 50-50, then by all means, go find her. But that's not the type of woman every woman is going to be. That's just the type of woman that you're going to look for and hopefully one day find but at the same time, that's not who every woman is going to be for you because they they don't feel like they need to be, you know. So it's fine. Like someone says, that's a roommate. Exactly. If I want a roommate, I can go get the roommate at any time and still date. That's what that's why it's not appealing to a woman. If you have to reach in your purse. And still be attracted to that man who's asking you for money at bill paying time. You might not be getting as much as you think you're going to be getting in the bed. Oh, okay. God. It's just not attractive. You said I'm racist. Everybody racist. Sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. So I think we know that by now. A woman can't respect a man who is less than she is. That's why I always date women you are better than. It is really simple. Exactly. Get your money. Okay. You said everybody has their prejudices. I only like green faces, like Kanye say. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Men want beautiful women and we want providers. That isn't new information. Exactly. I don't know why people acting like it's a crime to want some money. <laughs> if men have a problem with it, then that's not my problem. That's their problem. Do you understand? Like, why are we making their problem our problem? It's not our problem. We know what we want. Why focus on what we don't want? That is not our problem. 
what they feel like. Please, woman, help me. It's not my problem. That's their problem because they don't have what they want. And they feel like, oh, well, if I'm going to be with a woman, she's going to have to help build with me. Well, then don't be with a woman. Be by yourself so you don't need a woman's help. Then go get the woman you want instead of the woman that will compromise and uh, build with you because she can't get nothing better. I'm not going to do all of that. <laughs> Y'all have fun doing that, but it has nothing to do with what a woman wants. What a woman wants is what she should focus on until she gets it. Not be concerned about why a man think a woman should go 50-50. That's not my problem. Never has been. And I'm not going to make it my problem. I'm just saying, don't make it your problem, ladies. <laughs> Yeah, don't make it your problem. A man who opposes it doesn't want the responsibility of being a man. Exactly. What he's supposed to do is really not affecting him. Too much. A broke man doesn't need a woman. It's true. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You might, like, if you're going to go 50-50, you might as well go get you a woman who's going to pay 100 Cause we don't need your little 50% and we can pay half. And you're going to get bossed around and told to do. <laughs> ah. What? So, yeah, you're not going to have the respect that you think you're going to get. You go 50, 50 with the woman. You're just going to be a roommate basically or a friend. Because I'm not claiming no man that's talking about 50 50. You a friend. You a roommate and a friend. You ain't no man, not to me. So that's it. I'm not claiming you unless you're paying all these bills. You can't you can't claim me unless you're claiming all these bills too. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You want to claim me? Claim these bills. Because that's, that's, that's what I come with. All these bills. So claim them too. Y'all like this lipstick? It's called Siren. So I'm going to level up cosmetics.us. All right. Just type in Siren on levelupcosmetics.us and this looks the color. And if you want one similar, it's slightly more blue tone. It's, uh, I have one called the Rake, R-A-K-E, on the same website. Okay. <laughs> you said you go back to Nigeria. <laughs> um, they want 50-50 and be respected as a full provider of the audacity. <laughs> That's just because they have fantasies doesn't mean that they're going to come true. I mean, not to say that they won't find a woman to go 50-50 with them, but would they want to keep that woman? Will they stay with that woman? Will they marry that type of woman? Will they show that woman off? Will they be proud of that type of woman? Probably not. If all they want her for is to, for the financial building of him, you know, of himself, then that's what they're for. Just like a woman will take a man and, you know, use them for financial, whatever. A man can do the same thing for, you know, with a woman, but don't try to fool us by saying, oh, well, you need to be 50-50 and, you know, I need this type of woman because that's not what you really want. That's what you um, need. And I don't want to be someone's need. I want to be a want, okay? I don't, I don't want you to need me, baby. I need you to want me. That's it. And you want to pay and you want me, you don't need me. You don't need my 50%. You know what I'm saying? That's the type of man that you want. The ones that don't need you. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Mm-hmm. If you need me, I don't want you. Period. Why do women go for, I don't even, friends with benefits? Because they got options, baby. 
And I don't know why they go for friends with benefits. Maybe they just wanted the benefits to last longer. I don't know. They don't want nobody else getting the benefits. I don't know. Whatever it is. But sometimes maybe not everyone agrees on the friends with benefits. So who knows? I mean, if you're going to have a friends with benefits, if you're going to have a friends with benefit, don't have a friends with benefit. Just go get the man that you want. Okay. Which red is good for chocolate girls? Either red is going to be great on your skin tone. Um, but I would say if I had to choose, I would say the rake. But either one will be great. They all work. Mm -hmm. You said, is it possible for friends with benefits that you're going to be coming serious later? I don't know. If the man come to their senses, I guess. If the woman still want them, I don't know. Like It depends on who wants who. Is it, it's a big world. You don't have to stay in your hometown looking for one man. Take yourself out to get dressed and look for somebody. Or they can be just get dressed and somebody will find you, you know. I love your sense of humor, but some people might take your wise advice as a joke. When it is very much serious. <laughs> well, honestly, I would say use your common sense, you know, when making decisions. If you don't understand my sense of humor or if people don't understand my sense of humor, just use your common sense. It'll all make sense. Okay. There you go. We say we team gold digger over here. <laughs> yes. And that's not something to be ashamed of because most men use the term gold digger for the wrong you know, reason anyway, if you, if you want a full provider, obviously you're a gold digger, but that's not true. That's just what people have started to say for, you know, wanting the bare minimum. So you know, marriage is supposed to improve your life, not make it more stressful as a woman. Okay. So I don't know if it's, if your life is more stressful after you've married, then you did that wrong. He said, friends with benefit relationships and the best thing to having the rare high value men not in a, that don't even make no sense. I don't even use that term anymore. That term's gone. Um, if you got to put high value in front of something, it ain't high value. You got to put that term in front of something, it ain't high value. Just value is value. Okay. It's like saying a writing pen. What other kind of pen is it, baby? Got an ink pen? What other kind of pens they got? Stupid, right? You got an ink pen? Who still says that? I know old people say it. <laughs> All right. Um, you got an ink pen? No. Mm -hmm. How to find sugar babies to be friends with. Unless you want your sugar daddy stolen. A lot of sugar babies don't hang out together. They're more independent. They, oof. but honestly, um, you have a lot of people in um, different groups. Like on my Facebook group. I'm not, um, there's a lot of sugar babies in there are attempting to be sugar babies. Uh, more details for that, just scroll all the way down to the, in the description bar and contact D Taylor or so Diana Taylor in there to add you to the group. It is a paid group. So that's how you can find them or just go hang out where the sugar babies hang out. Uh, wherever that may be in your town. But yeah, men of value what a woman want and need patriarch providers who build and maintain. <sighs> men of means, not men of value. There's a difference. 
value is one penny. Valuable and man of means, I would choose to use those words. That means a man of means are always going to have means. Value can increase or decrease. I need a man of means who can make it happen, no matter what. That's the type of man you need. You see, a lot of men think that when they hit that high five figure or that finally get to six figures, they done made it. Get married and see how much money you got after that. You, you haven't made it. Like you, that's that's great for a single person, unless you're like mid. You know, it's great for a single person to to think that they're like a high value person. Like I don't even feel like that. I'm trying to get to the millions. You know what I'm saying? Or I I can't even feel like that. I I it's, if even if I was a man, I wouldn't say nothing until I got to at least half a million. Okay. <laughs> I'm not bragging as a man unless I get to at least half a million. Then I might say, uh, you know, I'm a catch. But until then, I'm not bragging on nothing like that. I need to be fully secure and my income needs to be fully secure with a good financial future in order for me to even brag as a grown man that I'm that I got it, that I'm a high value or a valuable or a man of means. When man of means means they don't need nobody else. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. If you if you if you say yes, sir, no, sir, you got a boss, you're not, you not, you know, you're not considered to be what quote unquote a man of means. Now you can be a provider. I'm not saying that. You can be a provider. You can take care of your family on that. But you don't need to be sitting there bragging about it because honestly, that's what you're supposed to be doing. Okay, that's not something to brag on. That's something to be proud that you are able to do. That That's something that you're supposed to do. Only people brag about it is the people who have been raised in, you know, terrible, broken families. And now, you know, being a provider and, you know, staying with their family is like an impossible feat. So. It is bragging if no one's done it in your family before. It is bragging if you're the first to do something and you feel accomplished about it. But it's the norm for many people. It's the norm for so many other people. So it looks silly when you're bragging on something that's the norm for the next person. So when you try to take that into consideration as a woman, like, okay, well, why is this person over here bragging about what this person does automatically and doesn't brag about whatsoever? It's just very weird, you know. So it's almost like, okay, the reason why certain people are bragging is because they've never seen it or done it before. Meanwhile, you know, generations and generations of people have done the right thing and don't seem a need to brag about what they're supposed to do. And so they're, therefore, they're focused on striving for more or maintaining what they already have instead of bragging about the bare minimum. So I feel like if you're in that, if you're in that state of mind as a man, Get over that quickly and, and strive for more. That's it. That's what you're supposed to do. Get over it quickly and strive for more. There, then you can brag. Mm -hmm. You said you're only bragging because that's 10% of it. It doesn't matter when you do the figures of 10% of the men on the planet. It's still millions. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which channel do you like? My channel. Let's All right. What do I think about pageants? I mean, if you think you can win and you think it's fun and it's a way to spend your time and that's what you like doing, I mean, who am I to say? Anything about it. If that's what you like, that's what you like. Everybody likes different things. You know, if that's what you enjoy, then more power to you. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to build with somebody, to create with somebody. I mean, think about this. As women, we, we already do enough. Do we have to contribute to what a man got one job to do? 
we already do enough. Do we need to do more? I mean, think about that. You got, and I say this in so many videos, y'all got one job provide. Y'all need help with that too? <laughs> mm hmm So we're supposed to have the kids, raise the kids, breastfeed, make sure the kids get to school, eat, help them with their homework, and then go help your grown self, sir. Would you got one job? Maybe two of you. Yeah, take out the trash. That's another job. But y'all acting like we ain't got enough to do. <sighs> What's the secret to succeeding in life? Succeed with someone else's money. <laughs> That's the secret, baby. Ask all the rich people. All right. Mm hmm. But personal success could mean goals and when you wake up happy and love the life you live. If that's your, um, you know, if that's the success you're looking for, when you love the life you live, when you wake up excited each day, um, when you're happy, when you can pretty much do what you want and you have freedom, that's success to me. Like you don't have to be a millionaire or a billionaire to have that success. But if that's how you wake up feeling each day, then you're successful. It's not all about money. Everybody thinks it's about money. It's about comfort and the ability to wake up happy and excited. And comfort and lifestyle contributes to that. So if you're unable to do that because you're stressed out and have to help a grown man all the time, then you're not going to feel successful or happy no matter how successful you are. If you know you got to get up and go help this grown man that you just got finished sleeping with, you are never going to feel successful. Not as a woman. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. I mean, a lot of women are, don't know why they feel a certain way, why they're not 100%, you know, feeling successful or they're not 100% feeling good in their relationships or marriage because you got to get up and go help a grown man with one job while you have plenty of other things that you also have to do, you know? Um, so I wouldn't, I would, I would definitely say, you know what, what am I doing? Do I need to be doing this? Okay. The average middle-class blue-collar worker makes above 100K a year, yet we would pass him by while she herself earns under 50K. Okay, well, can his 100K afford to pay all my bills plus his bills? You know what I'm saying? And how long and how hard does he have to work for that 100K? And is he going to be building upon that 100K? Is it going to increase in time? Because, you know, add some kids to the mix, he going to need a little bit more, old, you know? So that's why he gets passed over because if, if that's his ceiling of earning and I want a couple of kids, then that's not going to be enough. You understand? And it doesn't matter what's in my bank account. I could have zero in that bank account. If I'm going to give my, if I'm going to take myself off the market for somebody, they don't have to be able to pay for it my lifestyle, and our children. It doesn't matter what I got in the bank. It don't matter what I'm worth. I'm, I'm priceless. I'm a woman. Period. Okay? <laughs> That's why I'm saying men are always worried about what's in your bank account and what you worth. That don't matter. What are you worth? Okay? Because I'm going to choose. And it don't matter what's in my account. You don't, that's none of your business and you ain't going to touch it anyway. So what does it matter? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So a woman who's worth 50K will pass over a 100K man because she knows it costs more than that to have some kids and raise a family and have the house she wants, the car she wants, da, da, da. It's just not enough. And there's no shame in that. That is being real. 
Okay. And if she look good enough to get somebody that makes a little bit more or who can provide her needs, or maybe she'll, maybe she'll uh, use him until she, until he decide he want to own a company or stay working for a company. Then it's his decision to make more or stay at that level of however much he's earning. You know, just because he's a uh, blue collar doesn't mean he can't be an owner one day if he get his money right. So who cares? What's he going to do with his future? Is, is that is he satisfied with that? Can he climb higher than that? Does he want to climb higher than that? So it's not about a blue collar. It's like their mentality. Do you want to be a boss? Can you afford the lifestyle that I see for our future? If not, then stay where you are. And that's just how women think. We don't think like most men think we think. We're way ahead mentally. That's why a lot of men have trouble with women submitting because we already see the stupid decisions you about to make and we have to counteract it. <laughs> okay, they say one kid is 30K per year. Exactly. Or it could be more if they're greedy. So, you know, we don't, we, we got to consider the big picture, okay? Dating is, is fine, you know, but long-term, we got to aim higher. It's the same thing as y'all looking at ratchet chicks, um, you know, dressing in like provocative clothes. Yes, you, you may want to date her. You may want to sleep with her, but you don't see her being the mother of your children. On purpose. I mean, you may have it by accident, but you don't see that in your mind and or in your mental as, you know, our perfect, happy family, you know, 10 years from now. You don't see her filling the, those shoes. You know what I'm saying? So with women, it's the same thing. We we see what you can provide financially, how good of a, a husband and father you're going to be and how you put us on your priority scale. And we don't think that we um, are a good fit then we're not going to take you seriously. Mm -hmm. You said you make 30 to $40 an hour broke. Okay. But can you afford to pay for your bills? And if you were to have two, three kids with a woman and get her the house and the car she wants, could you afford that? Though? Like you may be blue collar and that may be good for a single person. And I'm not saying you're broke. I'm just saying you're not, you don't have enough to provide for a family or the type of woman who likes nicer things. That's all I'm saying. You may be able to contribute or go 50-50 with one. But are you going to be able to provide if y'all have two, three kids in a nice house, in a nice car, your car, car insurance, uh, insurance for the house, bills, them kids, et cetera, et cetera. Are you going to be able to afford that? $30, 40 an hour goes quick when there's four to five people in a household. So that's good for a single person. But when you add women and children to the mix, that money goes quick. So that's what I'm saying. You got to find a way to make more money if you want the type of woman that are sitting around saying, oh, I need a man with my money. You know, you got you to gotta own a business. You Because like whoever you're working for, they're getting more money than you are. And if you were to own your own business, you keep most of the money and you would invest back into your own business and have all that money at your fingertips and not have to wait on a paycheck or you wouldn't have to. And your, in, your salary increase um, goes up as your business increases. So if the company is making 20 percent more, so are you not one percent in a raise that your boss give you so you can stay satisfied. OK, not one dollar, two dollar raise, but 20 percent raise every year as the owner. So what I'm saying is people, men need to think bigger, not just be happy and satisfied with their little measly crumbs they think is money. When if you add two more, three more people to the mix, it's no money at all. Remember, you're supposed to be a provider, not someone who makes 30 dollars an hour alone. You have a family to think about. And I'm not trying to put you down. I'm just saying aim higher. If you're making that much money, what are you doing with that money? Are you investing it in yourself? Are you starting your own business? Are you making it so that one day you have no boss and your 20% increase goes directly to you and not no 1% raise? Get your money. 
think. You got to be a boss if you want respect, if you want a woman to submit to you, if you want a woman who thinks you're smart and can make good financial decisions and stuff like that and trust you. You got to look like you know what you're doing in this world. Okay. And that comes with being smart financially and what you're doing with your money. Mm hmm. He said, it's good to have your own business and multiple streams of income. Yeah, you need to have more than one stream of income if you're a man. I'm sorry. And these days, you need more than one stream of income. I don't care how much you make. What if that goes away? Then how much you make? Zero. Unemployment. Great. Then how much after that? Where's your other streams? Where's your other ambition? Where is your prospect to be an owner versus a worker? You know, where is it? At? I don't know. Where's that? Find it. Um, because women are, there are more female entrepreneurs than there are men these days. Okay. Mm -hmm. Y'all got to think if it's hard to impress a woman. Now, you know why? Because we see like that, like at least I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The goal is ownership. If you working and you're not working to own anything, then you, you won't be working forever. Okay. If you're not working to own something, then I don't want to hear about it. <clears throat> now, if you work just for fun and because you already got money coming in from other streams, like whatever, shoot, then great. But if you're not if you're not working to own, then you're just gonna then you're a worker. That's it. I mean, if you're a truck driver, why not work to own your own truck, trucking company? If you're what, if you're this, why not work to be the owner of that or open your own thing? That's all I'm saying. That way you don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. A good job doesn't mean a good career or success. It just means you found a good job temporarily until you don't have that job anymore. That's all. Like, and, and for a lot of women, they can't trust that. You need to be able to have multiple streams of income in case one thing fails. Mm -hmm. it, and that's why women looking pro for providers and not trying to build because they don't have to. Mm -hmm. I think... I think I've driven this point as far as I could. And I think y'all get the, the gist of it. Mm-hmm. You said so many women in society stop the cat. So many successful women in society stop the cat. You know, a woman can become successful overnight just by saying I do to the correct man. I'm just going to let y'all simmer with that. A lot of women can become successful overnight by signing a divorce paper as well. I'm just going to let y'all simmer off of that. A lot of ladies can become successful overnight after getting their degree and entering into the workforce or whatever as well. A lot of women can become successful just by having someone's baby overnight. Okay. So I'm just going to leave y'all with that. A lot of women can go wiggle around in front of some old dude and get their full tuition paid, books, car, and all that kind of stuff very easily. Okay? A lot of women can just go have lunch at Luby's once a week with some old dude and get their car note paid. Okay? I'm just trying to tell y'all. I'm, try I'm trying to help y'all figure out what successful looks like. Successful looks like waking up each morning being happy to wake up and not having to stress over where does money going to come from. Okay. Now y'all think about that. Mm -hmm. You said stay single until you hit the jackpot. Stay single until you can afford a family with no issues. 
with multiple streams of income? Like why settle for the bare minimum? I mean, you can, men, men should be able to improve, improve as they go, you know, but you know, if you are already good as a woman, if you can take care of yourself as a woman, then um, you shouldn't find a man who can't take care of himself as a man. That's all I'm saying. You need to find a man who can take care of him and you if you want to call himself your man. Okay. That's all. You say you don't like the struggle ones? If, if you don't claim me, you better claim my bills too. That's all I'm saying. You can't claim me unless you claim these bills. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> mm -hmm. In fact, y'all need to write new marriage vows. I take such and such and her bills as my lawfully wedded wife. <laughs> okay, when you write your new vows, like when you write your vows when, before you get married, make sure you stick that in there, okay? Because, <laughs> look, it doesn't matter how much a man makes or earns. If he can't pay for the lifestyle that you want, then he might as well be broke. Okay? So I'm going to leave y'all with that. I'll see y'all later.